give you the floor in this short segment and then coming up the next to break down the latest from DARPA saying, well, we do want the troops to have microchips to monitor their health. We care about them. Tell us about that. This DARPA thing is so freaky. And, you know, I, I took a bunch of classes at MIT because you can kind of cross and roll through Harvard and MIT. So I was at the Media Lab there for a while. And the Media Lab is where they do a lot of this really cutting edge kind of futuristic stuff. Like they had countertops that could tell what ingredients you put on them because of RFID tags. And that kind of ties into your earlier uh, reference to all of our appliances being able to listen to us through the smart grid and transmit information. All that stuff going on through the Media Lab at MIT and this whole thing with Minority Report, it was interesting, but Beth Givens from the Privacy Rights Clearinghouse actually talked to those guys. We interviewed her for our book Spy Chips, and she said that the, the folks who put together the movie Minority Report actually interviewed people doing defense research and people working at MIT to come up with all of those topics and all those themes. So it's all... It, it's it's all part of a big picture of military, industrial, academic, corporate research happening behind the scenes and then somehow funneling its way in to these Hollywood movies to give you this, this, this futuristic view. And, of course, the reason they can get away with it, Hollywood paints it as something really dark and bad. And we all look at it and we root for the good guy and he's running away from the bad guys in the dark, encompassing surveillance world and we're always cheering for the good guys. Nevertheless, even though they're giving you this image and, and, and encouraging you to root for the right guy, the rest of it is working its way deep, deep into your subconscious. Now, this thing about DARPA, I don't know to what extent this is vaporware. DARPA is, uh, as, as your listeners are probably aware, the defense uh, research thing here, which is uh, they are the people who put out our tax dollars and then ask for proposals and solicitations from companies out there. And this is why we know about them, because they, they are required by law to make these public, because they're spending public dollars. And they say, here is a request for proposals. Here's what we want to do. We have money. Companies out there, submit back to us. Give it your best shot. Tell us how you could pull this off. And then we will pay you and give you the contract. And then you develop it. And at that point, it becomes top secret, and nobody hears about it. But during this solicitation process, if people want to check this out. They can go to DARPA.mil and I'm always nervous going to any .mil website, especially DARPA's website, because believe me, if there's ever a website that could, like, I don't know, <laughs> look in your, look through your brain, through the computer screen, it would be DARPA. So I, I would encourage you to be careful going to DARPA.mil. You know, Start Page has the proxy, so that's how I get there. But well, if let you me just stop you. You're not being paranoid. When people went to get that Obama car rebate, it would give them a message saying the federal government has taken control of your computer. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. People freak no, out. No, no, Google's now been caught breaking passwords, stealing them, just out of hand, uh, breaking through cookie blockers. And tracking the iPhones and, yeah, all kind of crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, so, but you're still there. paranoid and bad because you were proven right. Please continue, bad lady. Yeah, so, so startpage.com, and I just have to put in a plug because there's a free proxy there. So if you search for DARPA.mil or solicitations or requests for propo proposals at Startpage, you will be able underneath to click the proxy link to the DARPA.mil website, and Startpage will load it on its servers, and you can see it their server so you never connect with DARPA and DARPA never sees you so they can't put software on your computer they can't read your cookies they can't put malware on they can't do anything they don't know you're there they're just seeing start pages servers so that's how I get there but once you get there you you can look up and I'm on a couple of different pages here one of them is opportunity slash solicitations and you can see all the things that DARPA is required by law to tell the public that they are looking to spend money on and of course in amongst there is this really disturbing one that uh, they wrote about in the uh, World in a Daily article. This is called in vivo, meaning in live living flesh, in, in actual animals or humans, in vivo nanosensors for diagnostics. It is solicitation number DARPA BAA1233. So you can find it right there on the DARPA.mil website. Again, go through startpage.com though. And when you get there, I'll just read the, the quick description. This is the, the very short summary. They say the goal is to develop biocompatible nanosensors that provide provide continuous, non-invasive, haha, and highly accurate measurement of a variety of conditions and substances within the living tissue of animals, plants, and insects. 
Using non-toxic materials, the sensors will permit qualitative and quantitative assessment over large concentration ranges of glucose, lactate, and urea in large molecules. So they're talking nanosensors. They say they're not invasive, but these things are obviously deep. Oh, yeah, I saw flesh. the Pentagon new battle suit, and it automatically tests your urine and all this. Stay right there. We're going to come back and get into these. And, guys, reprint me those articles from two weeks ago about uh, dangerous nanotech is in hundreds of foods and products because now they're admitting that's getting in people's brains there's already nanotech in the food we're eating sick of the globalist eugenesis control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die start purifying your water with pro pure my friends i've done a lot of research and the best gravity filter out there bar none is pro pure and it's available discounted at infowars.com its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth there's no priming required it's nsf 42 certified optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95 percent easy to set up and use does require electricity purify water from lakes streams ponds and wells this filter system leaves in beneficial minerals which is key save money by not buying bottled water and avoid bpa that leaches from the plastic pro pure is the best gravity fed filter out there it's what my family uses infowars.com already has the lowest price on pro pure but if you add the promo code water at checkout you get an additional 10 percent off at infowars.com you can also call to order 888-253-3139 I want to get Catherine's take on this, but from my perspective and research, the elite believe they're going to become God. Now, the media picks that up and says, Alex Jones says the elite are going to become God. No, that's not what I say in Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement. That's not what I say on the show. The elite, and I give sources where they say they believe they're going to merge with machines and that that is the new evolutionary jump that's going to happen and they're going to set up their planetary system and basically get rid of the population before we ever even get to that point. Now, whether they're going to carry that out or not, I don't know. But they've already been carrying out the precursors to it. And so, yeah, that's a scary thing. But it's real. And that's what we're facing as a society. Catherine, um, you know, if you're just joining us, Dr. Catherine Albrecht, um, researcher, uh, author into these uh, subjects. From your research, what makes the globalists tick? What type of world are they trying to build? I mean, Google says they want to own the internet. They want to have over the horizon uh, predictive powers with the computers to be able to tell mass events before they take place. Uh, it's a surveillance system where they can tell where mass movements are going to be able to head them off. But it's still humans at the end of the day that are in control of this and humans that are willing to dominate and break laws. And so we have incredible power in the hands of very sadistic, wicked people. I mean, the final equation from your research, what is the New World Order? What is their end game? And what are some of the other uh, cutting edge developments that you're watching? You know, you, 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 you really pegged it because we all know the old phrase, knowledge is power. And this is about power. We also know Lord Acton's phrase, power corrupts absolutely. And what, what we're now coming to a point, and, and you ask what drives these people, I think it is an unbridled lust for the ultimate form of power, which is the ability to decide who lives and who dies, the ability to, to decide who can procreate or who can live forever, the ability to decide which trees fall in which forest or, or where a frog jumps or everything else. Because in my research, I mean, you've got the IBM planetary skin, you've got them putting sensors in oceans, you've got them putting sensors in, in forests, into trees. I ran across a document by a big international forestry organization that actually came up with some statistics to figure out what it would cost to put an RFID microchip spy chip in every single sapling, every single tree on planet Earth. You know, the planet is getting small enough now that they're actually envisioning the ability to identify every single last animal and microchip them all. So it's really, you know, what, what would inspire someone to want to do that? And the only thing that I can think that would inspire someone to want to do that is if they're kind of tapping into a, a darker desire, which gets us onto the spirit realm, which is the desire to be completely and totally in, in control, like God. And, you know, you can go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, and of course the conversation
conversation that occurred there <laughs> between Satan and Adam and Eve. That conversation, you know, the, the foundation of Western civilization, trace it all the way back to its beginning, and that conversation was all about power. You know, the knowledge of good and evil, you will become like gods. Just take a bite out of this apple. And by the way, let me point out that all you listeners out there who have Apple iPads and iPhones and, and laptop computers, you are carrying around the visual representation of that symbol all day long. You've got the apple with a bite out of it. That represents a deal that was struck when the, the offer was made. Hey, listen, I will make you like gods. You will have the power of God. And of course, the reality is the only power from God is, is from God. You know, when God gives you power, that's real power. When God has power, that's real power. But when you get into this technological, twisted, dark stuff, it always, always, always comes with a price. And in fact, we opened Spy Chips with a quote by C.P. Snow from the New York Times. This is back in the 1970s. And he said, technology is a queer gift. It gives you great gifts with one hand and stabs you in the back with the other. And I can think of no technology. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I've, I've been reading all these books about the Luddites and about uh, you know, the 1800s and the implementation of all these technologies and where they all got their start. And all of them have come with this huge downside. And ultimately, that downside is going to be the destruction of our entire planet. Look at what's going on over in Fukushima. Look at what uh, you know, happened to Hiroshima. And by the way, the, the, I the have more articles. Uh, uh, speaking of that, Fukushima reactor number four, vulnerable to catastrophic collapse, could unleash 85 times the cesium-137 radiation of Chernobyl, and the Japanese government even admits that. The Pentagon says it's a national security threat, but they just had the uh, EPA and FDA raise the level and say that higher levels of radiation uh, is now just safe. Again, they could care less about <laughs> real environmental crises. They're telling us humans are evil because of carbon dioxide, but reactors blowing up, that's not a problem. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that crazy? And yeah, they will keep moving the bar, and, and that's what's happening. You keep moving the bar further and further out as to what's acceptable, what's tolerable, what we'll put up with. And this is one of the things that I said to Bob Unruh when he interviewed me from WorldNet Daily. He said, listen, they're, they're not going to come one day with tanks and guns, and, and maybe they will, but believe me, it's not going to happen until people are really softened up for it, and say, hey, get a microchip. It's going to be little by little, and you're going to have, you know, kids, 15, 18 years old, going, cool, you mean if I have a microchip? implant, then I can just ask questions and my Google goggles will just give me the answer. No, exactly. Right they're, they're, uh, that's what the Pentagon said decades ago, as you know, is that they would entice people. DARPA said people will basically end up begging for all of this. And then the final pockets of Luddites, of Amish, of, of people like that that are already being harassed, it'll be, well, they weren't giving them training or they won't, weren't giving them access to all this. And then they'll come and be picked up for other reasons. They always phase it in like, like, like the TSA, like everything else. You know, I talk about on my radio show a lot, Alex, that, that there's an 80% cutoff, that once you've got 80% of the population doing anything, fill in the blank, whatever it is, then you can force the other 20% to get on board. And I'm already seeing this with the toll transponders, those little things people put, the fast pass and easy pass things they put in their windshield to go through the tolls. I won't use one. I don't use one. I never will use one. I will take surface streets before I'll use one of those things because that's an RFID-based spy chip tracking device in your car. However, now now that they've got 80% of people on board in many communities around the country, now they're moving to make those mandatory, where you can't even pay cash. There's no option of paying cash. Same thing is true with all of these different technologies. Once 80% of people have smartphones, there's going to be a requirement. You know, just like a social security number, you can't get a job without one. So all the holdouts back in the 30s, 40s, 50s who said, oh, that's the mark of the beast, they all had to sign up. Or they died off, and then their kids signed up. Same thing is going to happen with the cashless society. Same Things going to happen with near field communication cell phone payments and ultimately they're pushing for that same thing to happen with the implants so i would look for the implants it is you know we we were out there protesting i did a prayer vigil in a march against the pro, the chipping of the alzheimer's patients in florida if people want to go to antichips.com they can see not only the photos of that event but they can also see uh i don't know it's like a 50 page document uh, an academic document that i wrote about those microchips causing cancer in laboratory animals so there's also a i think like a hundred page or a hundred question faq anti chips.com people can check it out and learn more about these implants